G'day, how's it going? Today I thought I'd share with you my method for modeling weathered timber. Hopefully you'll find this a fairly quick and easy process and be able to get similar results when trying to capture that look of weather beaten old timber. So here's what you'll need. I'm using some small sample pieces of decking to show how this method works for a few different types of timber. The samples include balsa, basswood and thin coffee stirrers. And I should mention I'm working in O scale, so 1 to 48 or 1 to 43. Your weapons of choice for adding age and grain to the timber are up to you, but here's some of the tools that I work with. A razor saw is always handy to drag along the timber just to start breaking the smooth surface. A wire brush starts to be a little bit more aggressive and can cut more randomly into the timber. Some sharp nosed tweezers can also be used to indent knots or even pull splinters out of the boards. And finally, perhaps my favourite tool for the job is a sharp metal scribe, which is great for drawing in deeper, prominent grain lines. <laughs> no, I haven't been sponsored, but this is just an old jar to hold my stain mixture. I use a wood stain colour called Black Japan, which I dilute with some IPA. I use a ratio of one part stain to ten parts alcohol. So for this jar, that's 10 mils of stain with 100 mils of alcohol. This 250 mil tin of stain should last me my lifetime of modelling. The other main part to this method is soft artist pastels. Now I use both Art Spectrum and Rembrandt brands, but both give similar results. If anything, the Rembrandt version may have some stronger pigments in it. But both brands have a great range of suitable browns and greys to try with this method. The last few things you'll need is a separate jar of IPA or alcohol and some fine grit sandpaper. Anything around a two to three hundred grit paper will be okay and a nail file or emery board is also handy to have. So let's give it a go. This sample piece uses the coffee stirrers for the deck. They're a fairly hard timber so you can be kind of rough with the graining process. How weather beaten you make the timber will depend on your modelling needs. After adding the grain, it's good to give it light sand just to help remove any loose fragments of timber. And then we're ready to move on to some stain. The stain is the initial colouring. It's meant to be applied in uneven blotches to help with the random shades across the timber. The stain will soak into the grain details well and help add depth and shadow to the final look. The alcohol dries or evaporates off quite quickly, but I still use a hairdryer to speed up this drying process even further. In fact, the hairdryer is perhaps my most frequently used tool at the workbench. Once the stain is dry, we have the desired mottled uneven finish. The next step is to start building up the colour with the soft pastels. Working directly onto the timber, draw on patches of pastel colours. Don't overthink it and try and keep it random. You can always repeat this step and add more layers later on if desired. Now 
grab a jar of alcohol and it's time to turn the pastels into a colour wash. Brush the alcohol on, working with the direction of the grain. The alcohol does a great job of washing the pastels deep into the timber with a nice matte finish. and speed up the drying again if you're a bit impatient like me. The pastels will be lighter in colour once they are all fully dry. The dried pastels leave a great layered patchwork of colour but there's one more step to finish up. Grab your sandpaper and start cutting back through these colour layers. This will reveal a subtle blend of weathered timber tones across the boards and also help remove loose pastel colour and finally smooth the finish out nicely. Sand harden up along the edges and you'll get back to the original timber colour which effectively leaves the same finish as what dry brushing would but without the need for paint. Which leaves us with our final result, some nice old weathered timber plenty of grain and character and all done with just a couple of pretty simple steps. Comes up okay given they're only cheap coffee stirrers. And remember those other sample pieces of basswood and balsa decking? Well, they came up just as well using the same method. The basswood is a much finer grain and great to add detail to. The balsa is much softer and very easy to rough up, so you need to be a bit more gentle with the graining process. The best parts about this method is it has minimal steps and only a few materials. Less steps helps make it easy to get repeatable and predictable results each time. This is pretty much my go-to method for creating that weathered timber look, so I hope you might find this method useful for one of your future modelling projects. Cheers, till next time.